Welcome to Rugby AM, and we're not in the studio today. We're sat at Old Trafford, weeks away from the grand final, and we've got a very special guest. Jones is on Mad Monday, he's last night on Mad Monday. We've got Robert Elston, CEO of Super League. Robert, you must be excited sitting here and looking down onto that hallowed turf. Yeah, it's always exciting Old Trafford, isn't it? Although, uh, in my previous life coming here as an Everton CEO, it wasn't always the most rewarding ground that Everton ever visited. But it's a special place yeah. and uh, grand final linked with Old Trafford since uh, day one. And the hairs on the back of the neck when players emerge out of that tunnel is a special, special moment. So, yeah, as you said, only a few weeks away and uh, a lot of speculation about who's going to be there. But, yeah, really exciting for us. We've had the most exciting season mm -hmm. I think we've ever seen at Super yeah, League. Yeah. And I, I sent a tweet out last week. We get rid of the million pound game, we end up with two. <laughs> How did you feel? <laughs> Was it Go, two or was it three? I well, don't know. Yeah, three, you know well, uh, then we've got one, the million pound <laughs> game, which happened in, yeah. in, the, in the championship. So it, it's an amazing season yeah. in London. Yeah. Uh, just a credit to, to Danny Ward, to, to David Hughes and everybody there. It, it's a phenomenal story. Absolutely right. Uh, London have been a... Uh, as you said, a credit to Super League. They've yeah. been a big uh, bonus. I don't think anybody expected them to perform, perform as they did. I'm sure London Broncos expected themselves to perform at that level. But I've seen them a lot. I've seen them down at uh, Ealing Trailfinders. Um, they've played exceptionally well. They've been competitive pretty much week in, week out. I went to see them at Hull KR two weeks ago and they were absolutely superb. They were easily the best side, you know, that like commitment. Uh, uh, skill, the way in which they won that game was commendable and, and going into that final game at Wakefield it was it really was anybody's game and absolutely London uh, on 20 points, incredible really to think that they're only 10 points behind a team that made the playoffs, that's absolutely incredible yeah. so the season's worked out incredibly well um, uh, and, and yeah, no, phenomenally exciting. You've been in the job a year, roughly, how would you rate your first year? <laughs> Give yourself a score out of 10. <laughs> that's a tough question and I'm always you know, genuinely, I'm always hard on myself. Uh, I always want more. Um, I always want to make progress quicker. Um, there are things I think we could have moved forward uh, at a quicker pace. Um, listen, I'm not going to give myself a mark, but others can do yeah. that. But I do think we've we've done a lot. And I think I get occasionally sort of wise counsel in my ear saying, you know, don't try and do everything on day one. Don't, you know, bite off more than you can chew. What we can't do is let that be, take your foot off the gas. Yeah. We've got to keep our foot off the gas. I've said all along our critical agenda is being ready for a Sky negotiation. So we can't afford to relax. We can't take our foot off the agenda. I think you know we, we, we delivered the rule changes. The, 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 the club's brought over some great players. We developed, we, we developed a great fixture yeah. list. So the opening round was terrific. We delivered a record aggregate attendance at Easter. We moved Magic on to Anfield. Um, Listen, and I think the way the fixture list has worked out and the league tables worked out, you can't say anything other than that was probably you yes. know, a bit of good fortune. But I think you know, what we did do was take away the uncertainty of the middle eights and super age, which really didn't work. So we put a bankable fixture list in and actually, you know, by coincidence, that's delivered that relegation battle we yeah. just talked about. Yeah. And, 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 and what I'm sure is going to be exciting moving to playoffs. The project we're working on now, probably more than anything, is about a rebrand, a refresh for how Super League yeah. will look. And we've we've hired the people that did the Premier League's uh, wow. work. And, and you know I think anybody who looks at what the Premier League did in terms of rebrand will be impressed by that. And I've seen some great initial ideas coming out of that. So that'll be launched for 2027. And why does it need it? Why does the sport need? Why does Super League need to rebrand? I, I, I think you know what we've got to do as a sport is really smarten ourselves up, sharpen ourselves up, look you know fresher, look cleaner. You know, we're, we're, look we're, 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 we're absolutely look yeah. younger. And, and, you know, we are a bit cluttered, we are a bit tired, we are a bit frayed around the edges. Now, Super League at the centre needs to take that lead and sharpen itself up and smart itself up. But ultimately, that's about how we deliver at 12 Super League yeah. rounds every week. So we have to work hard with our clubs to make sure, you know, uh, you know, branding and advertising look smart, the dugouts look great, uh, you know, the walkouts look good. And if you're looking at our sport, it looks modern, it looks progressive, yeah. it's in line with other sports and how they're, you know, branding themselves. Now we're taking that lead, we're hopeful that the clubs are going to fall in line, we're going to produce some digital assets for them yep. to use on their own websites and on Sky, so I'm really excited about what that might deliver. Mate, it's, it, it's delivered a great season so far and no one can doubt that and I just want to talk about the top five because Saints have been totally dominant. Wigan 14 points behind Warrington mm. at Easter mm. at Magic, they've come back mm. to finish second. Salford who was everyone's tip for relegation, yeah. Ian Watson's 
earned himself a GB call yeah. with Wayne Bennett yeah. from his fantastic work. Mm -hmm. And I think there for me, that, that's the story. Yeah, if you yeah. say he was coach of the year, I'd say he wants to, yeah. for what he's achieved with a limited budget, and now he's got the best out of Jackson Hastings on and off the pitch. Yeah. Um, Warrington, have just fallen to bits, mm. but they've won the Challenge Cup, so they can win in that, in that big pressure mm. against Saints. Mm. And then Castleford have kind of limped into the five. Mm -hmm. Are you a Cass fan? <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> I, well, listen, I think you've just nailed it there, really, Alex, in terms of their story of the season, particularly around that top five. I think in terms of Salford, you know, probably a lot of people would have them down to finish 11. So, yeah. you know, for an eight-position po eight swing from yeah. 11th to third, I think you're absolutely right. Shows the extent to which they've overperformed. Again, I think in the pundit size, you know, I, I know speaking to Salford, uh, you know, January, February this year, they were hugely ambitious about what they have. And, of course, what they do have, you know, is an amazing sort of stellar uh, scrum half who um, I think has been outstanding. Singing first hand, you know, the way in which he dictates, manages and runs games, I think is hugely impressive. And for me, he's one of the best players I've seen in a long time in yeah. Super League, just in terms of between his ears and his ability to, to make things happen. I think he's an outstanding player and, uh, you know, clearly uh, a huge uh, signing for Wigan in, in, in 2020. But I think the five is, is you're right, it's, um, it's going to be really, really exciting. Saints have been absolutely, you know, dominant, as you said. Uh, and they're going to be hard to beat. I think one thing I'd like to stress to all fans out there is that the grand final is the celebration for the sport. It is. We want people to come along, have a great night in Manchester, Absolutely. go for a few drinks, experience the fan zone, experience the hot copper hospitality. It's a great sporting experience now, is. isn't it? It? Is. it is, and I come back to that. You know, hairs on the back of the neck moment. Yeah. As the players walk out, as the lights dim, as the focus goes on that tunnel, it is incredible. It's the high spot of the Super League season. And, and I couldn't agree more, Alex, that it's when the whole rugby league family, irrespective of who you support, you know, we need to come together. It is a spectacular night and we need to show the world uh, how great a Super League grand final is. L last year, you know, uh, I uh, invited Nicky Campbell, BBC yeah. Uh, radio broadcaster, uh, I think he said he'd been to one game in his life yeah. before when he was in Australia, loved it. I said, you must come to this one. At half time, his jaw was you know, wow. down here and he said, look, make sure you get me on my invite for next year because I absolutely love this. As I've said before, I got Barney Francis, who was the then boss of Sky Sports, with yeah. his two sons watching it. And you could just see them nudging one another during the game, like, did yeah. you just see yeah. that? You know, so there is that you know, and, and, and it is, you know, the absolute best of the best on that uh, Saturday evening in October. We're going to talk about another extraordinary night coming up, which is the Man of Steel. Yeah. We've changed that, revolutionised it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll speak about that, but right now we're going to go to Cass, a place you know and love, as the Toronto team visit Cass High and meet some young ladies taking a trip over to Toronto. <laughs> We decided to take a tour to Canada after a couple of years ago now, one of the girls had come to speak to me about the fact that the boys got an opportunity to go to Australia and there wasn't something of similar standard for the girls. With the Women's Super League taking off over the last couple of years, it's really inspired some of our girls uh, and there was, there was a need to take them to, uh, on, a, on a trip and kind of expand uh, their horizons really and kind of give them the opportunity to play in a different country. Um, we do do a trip with the boys, which is to Australia, but we've realised that, um, that, that uh, rugby in Australia for, for this age group uh, isn't as developed as what it is for us. They don't have champion schools, for example, um, competitions. Um, so we got in touch with, with Toronto Wolfpack um, and they were really happy to kind of set up a link. Um, so we're obviously going to take the girls over to Toronto um, and we're going to play a fixture against Toronto City Amazons. Um, and obviously today's testament to the club really that they've been so involved with us and given the girls a shirt and, and really raised the profile of, of girls sport and women's rugby league. We've got a very, very significant mandate in Canada to try and exp expand the game and expand it uh, certainly at the youth level. This is a great example of, you know, bringing the UK very talented teams over to Canada to show, you know, show off the game. And anything like that is a big attraction for a lot of fans across the water. And so I think it's just another example of, of how we grow the game generally. You can grow it in the UK or grow it in Canada. Canada needs a lot more exposure than it has today. And we're working hard to try and work at the community level and develop those young players. 
any chance to travel is a, a, a great opportunity for them, especially at their age, you know, and, you know, they're going to play a, hopefully a very tough Canadian team and have a great, great match. But, uh, you know, we're quite excited about hosting them and, and I'm sure that both the, ho the local team and the Wolfpack will show them a great time. I'm really excited. I think it's a really good opportunity because especially for um, like women's sport and I think it's really good that women's rugby is becoming like a bigger thing. Um, and I think trips like this for the younger generations really will make a difference to the future of women's sport and like and girls themselves. It's the sports toss we'll be seeing, like a basketball game and all that kind of thing. And then also like the culture and obviously like having the games against um, Toronto City Amazons that'll be like I think like a good a good way for us to learn from other teams and to obviously to socialise as well. We're just coming down and doing a bit of a session, having a bit of fun and yeah just showing them some of some of the skills we do day to day a little bit and presenting them with some shirts so wishing them good luck when they when they get over there. The way the women's games you know going in England it's only it's only good to go over there and promote like like ourselves are trying to do over there with rugby league for, for men it's equally important that happens for women as well. To go on the tour with these girls is just exciting. I can't wait to spend the time, with not just the girls, we're meeting Toronto players and playing rugby league in a different country. With any trip, when you're going that sort of distance across the world, you rely on local knowledge and local partnerships to make the trip a success. Toronto have been incredible, a real partnership between ourselves and them in terms of one of a few things. First, getting us really strong fixtures against some local strength in rugby league teams. But two, they're ready to make a fuss of us when we get out there to see all the things that go on behind the scenes in terms of training facilities, um, other opportunities, to meet like-minded people to make the trip a once in a lifetime. Yeah, so when I was a kid, um, yeah, I never got a chance to, to do anything like this, especially somewhere like Canada and go experience Something like that, like like these girls are getting to do is, you know, it's something they'll remember for pretty much most of life, I'd imagine. So, yeah, it's a good thing, definitely. The, the expansion of rugby league has always been, for us, hugely important. We've tried where we can to take teams away to Spain. We've gone to Italy, Australia, and now Canada this October. And it's really important that we develop the girls' game as well as the boys' game, but in particular the girls for those opportunities really for what they can go on for some sort of career in rugby league as they grow older. On top of that, we also think that there are a lot of skills gained from taking part in rugby league that just benefit everybody for not only involvement in sport, but also in successful lives. So anything we can do to add to that, we definitely want to get involved in. This is a national level program and, and uh, you know, again, we're a very entry level uh, youth team. So I'm hoping we can be competitive and uh, I'm hoping they have good weather since it's going to be uh, the day before or day after Halloween. So, yeah, I just think they'll have a wonderful experience and, and we're just hoping they don't beat us too bad. Can we have a howl for the wolf pack? <laughs> it's great to be down at Cass Academy, uh, a school we've been to over the years. And uh, Bill, you know Bill Cliff, obviously mm. he's not with us yeah. anymore, but what a legend. And I always think of Bill when I, when I mm. talk to anyone from Cass Academy. What a great bloke and uh, he's sorely missed by everyone at the school and everyone in rugby league circles. Um, Toronto going over yep. to do a bit of a bit of outreach into Cass, <laughs> getting the brand out there because there's a highly likelihood they'll be in Super League next year. How do you feel about Toronto coming into Super League if they get there? I'm having ground that day. Didn't you ask me this question? Yeah, they were highly likely last year, weren't they? They are. They are. They highly were. Likely. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Even more highly likely this I'll year. I'll tell you now. Brian McDermott will not lose that game. The playing like Leeds played. Okay. They, they look very. No, good. listen. I think clearly they're hot favourites. They dominated yeah. that season, uh, the, the, the the championship season. But you know, I know. Uh, Toulouse have already been in touch with Super League asking uh, how do they work next year. So they're pretty confident yeah. as well. Uh, Toronto uh, are doing a lot of good stuff, um, which you have to admire. Uh, you know, I've been out there once for that whole KR game in uh, middle eights last year, and I think I said, you know, it felt young, it felt fresh. Branding's good, mm -hmm. merchandise is good. There's some yeah. good stuff happening there. As I've said before, however, you know, Toronto, um, you're dealing with it on different levels. I think yeah. most fundamentally, you know. 
the integrity of the competition. Can we manage transatlantic flying yeah. and, and a team on the other side of the world without damaging competi competitive integrity, competition yeah. integrity? And I don't think that's uh, assuring. I think that needs to be looked at. You know, I think it's it's an arduous journey. Um, and it may affect the balance of the competition. I think we need to be certain that's not going to happen. I think the other thing really is about its own self-sustainability and where yep. it's heading as a, as, as a rugby league club. And I think you know there's clearly exposure to the current ownership group, which is doing things in the right way, which is yep. trying to build, which is building audience, which is building commercial partners. But ultimately, there you know there's no getting away from it. There is that exposure to to the ownership group. I think then the third dimension is the most interesting bit, which is what does it bring for Super League yeah. as a whole? And does, it, and, and does it bring incremental TV monies, sponsorship monies, fan monies into Super League? And I think, you know, the jury is very much out on that. Yeah. Um, however, you know, if they win their uh, grand final, then subject to some minimum standards. And, and indeed, we are talking to the RFL about um, Making sure that process is done tightly and managed particularly well, then yeah. you know they will, I'm sure, come into uh, Super League. And if we if they do, then we've got to embrace it really, really positively. And that's what we will do. Um, you know, there are undoubtedly question marks. There are, uh, you know, you know, I talk to a lot of people who scratch their heads and feel, you know, it's very random, it's very spurious, and, and, and nobody can really understand why and how and what. And then equally talk to other people who just think this is really exciting. Yeah, it's a brave it's, new world. It's awesome. So, it's so, good. <laughs> so you're, you're it's in amazing. you're in that camp. Yeah. It is an amazing city, um, but ultimately the it is. The presentation itself is like it's old school. It's like something out of the seventies in some respects, but it's great fun it, and it's genuine fun. It is, but we can't get away from the fact you know yeah. where it is, how far it is, the demands it'll place on the competition, uh, its sustainability, and ultimately. You know, is it growing the Super League cake now? You know, it's harsh to say. You know, a club that was only founded three, four years ago, whatever it was. You know, it's hard for them to have that track record to be able to demonstrate very clearly. So it is a, it is a bit of a leap of faith. But um, and it would be, I think, a lot easier were it not uh, for where it is geographically. You know, I've said to people, it feels a little bit like yeah. if you were going to pick a hundred cities where you put a Super League club. Yeah. You know, would Toronto be in the top 100? It probably wouldn't. Probably not. So it is yeah. a bit random. Now, uh, listen, we've got to make sure that if they do come into Super League, uh, we embrace them. We uh, uh, try and take advantage of what opportunities they bring. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and we do a great job looking after Toronto in that competition. I want to talk about Dream Team because Dream Team was announced this week. And for the first time, I thought it was a really good idea. Uh, Adam Treby sent me a text saying, we just go on and pick your team and then yeah. share it on Twitter. Like, I picked it, and it, it literally five minutes, before you all crucify me for not putting more Saints players in, five minutes, here's my dream team, and I got eight out of the 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm happy with that. Eddie Batty got in mine, and Jay Pitts, because I thought they'd yeah. given a lot for the yeah, club yeah, yeah. this year. And I think it, it was a nice spread. Liam Watts got in. Yeah, yeah. Is he been superb for you this year? Uh, Liam Watts has been uh, terrific at Cass. You know, in a team, you know, I think, you know, with a lot of injury issues and, and, and I have to say, you know, a bit inconsistent, yeah. you know, and the one thing any coach wants, I think, is consistency. I think Liam Watts has been Mr. Consistent. He's yeah. taking it up. He's, he's got yards week in, week out. So, yeah, he's been a good player. But, you know, the whole Dream Team uh, Awards Night, Man of Steel, yeah. exactly what you've just Ex described, explain, Alex. Explain. But exactly what Sell you've it. described is absolutely yeah. what we want because sport is all about talkability. Yeah. It's all about opinion. It's all about getting stuff out there that people disagree with, agree with, think you're crazy, think you're absolutely on the money. And I think what we've done this year is taken what was a bit of a tired product. Yeah. I don't necessarily like the word product, but Dream Team, Man of Steel had got a bit stale. Yeah, the I integrity feel. is back in it. Uh, we've stimulated some interest. The awards night, which is going to be at the Lowry Theatre, means it's yeah. accessible to all. You How know. do people get tickets? Because this is a fan event. It is, it is absolutely a fan event. So each club, what we want is 12 Super League teams. We've given yeah. 100 tickets to each team. It's going to be a really good night. Can you, can you give us a few snippets of how it'll work, <laughs> how it'll feel? It, it is, It is. you know, it's about coming to a theatre. Yeah. It's about sitting back in your chair with some popcorn and, and whatever and enjoying a show. Yeah. So we've got a great host. Uh, we're working Lovely. with Lee Hick in the city talking <laughs> on, on video content and Lee does brilliant work. Yeah. We've got a few sort of interactive stuff with sofas and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a really, really good night. And what we've set ourselves is to say to the fans, you know, get to the Lowry, sit back and enjoy the show. And, and I think, again, you know, it demonstrates where we're trying to take things and there's a, there's, a, there's, a ton of, there's, there's a ton of work in it. We don't have a load of resources. We're, we're 
pinning our ears back and hoping it all works on the night. But what we had before was, you know, a really nice black tie event. Yeah. Um, the, the awards night had been, you know, left uh, really to the end of the season. The black tie thing, I think, got a bit dated. Uh, we weren't opening it up to the public. The fans weren't really bought into it. So we wanted to do something different. So again, you know, uh, we've taken on a challenge and hopefully it'll work for us. Well, get your tickets. Speak to your club if you want to go. Uh, each club's got 100 tickets. Is that the max they're going to get? Uh, I think there might be a little bit of horse trading between yes. clubs. So uh, yes. I think uh, we'll certain clubs are uh, thinking they might want to take a few more, but we're keen to keep it. What I really want, and what I've said to the clubs, is make sure your 100 fans come in club colours. Yep. Look, you know, look bright, look colourful, get behind no the award winners. No, no flares. No, no flares, flares inside the Lowry. No, no <laughs> flares. Is, uh, Joey, what was his name? Joe Lucy. No, 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 the camera player who got oh, hit by the God, yeah, Joey Lulua. Joey Lulua, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Lulua, no, we don't, we don't. Joey Lulua. We don't, Lulua. We didn't do that no very flares, well, did we? No. But no flares. Yeah. Um, but, but no, and what we've said to the players and the award winners is, you know, uh, you know, it's a bit cliche, but dressed to impress. We want it to be modern, we want it to be young, we want, you know, uh, people who are nominated awards to come and, uh, and, and, and strut their stuff if that's not, you know, sounds a bit, a bit yeah. naff from an old man like me. But we want it to look great and be, you know, really visual, so uh, be good. Exciting. It's exciting because new things happen in rugby league. New beginnings was the, was yeah. the slogan. Yeah. Do you think you delivered on that slogan? Uh, yeah, the TV ratings uh, are good. Uh, yeah. You know, let's be honest about it. It's uh, very much a function of the channel that we go on on yeah. Sky. If we're on Sky Sports uh, main event, then uh, and Sky Sports Mix, we get better viewing figures, and uh, and we're keen to push that. But Sky uh, Sky numbers are good. Attendance numbers across uh, a number of clubs are good. Uh, we just need to keep the momentum in the playoffs. You know, I'm hoping that. You know, we see some big crowds at our playoff games. And, and as you said before, Alex, the most important thing here is packing out this place yeah. in, in, in three to four weeks' time. Get yourself along, come and support. Now, last year we lost John Bateman to the Canberra Raiders. This year we're losing George Williams, but we're getting some huge talent coming in. George we Burgess, are. good mate of mine, coming back. Yep. James Maloney, yep. current origin star. <coughs> yep. Who else have we got? Gaz Widdup. Gar Gareth Widdup. Manu absolutely. Mao. Yeah, no, wow. it's so much to look forward to, you know, and, and, you know, I think, you know, your your viewers know that I'm, you know, a rugby league, not a rugby yeah. league fan. Of, but, you know, I, I love it and I love it because it's all about the players yeah. and I want to see players that are going to get me on the edge of my seat. And that's when, you know, I watched Jackson Hastings this year yeah. and I look at a player who's pulling strings, making things happen. I love that. James Malone is going to do that. Gareth Widdop's going to do that. And as you said, you know, uh, George Burgess taking it up and, uh, and, and, and you know, I think next year already is shaping up to be a fantastic competition. So lots to look forward to. All about the players and it's great that our clubs continue to invest in, you know, some fantastic names uh, that are going to grace Super League in 2020. Outstanding. We've got a fan message now and I'm really sorry. Liam, you emailed the, the Rugby and fan page and I was up and I replied saying, oh, funny, it's a video, we'll definitely put it on TV. I didn't say when we're going to put it on TV, but right now, you can see Leon's son Riley holding the flag, being dragged along as everyone runs off. He's just, he's just going. <laughs> Riley, absolutely outstanding, mate. Keep it up down at Pilkin and Rex. Good luck for the rest of the season and next year as well, mate. It's, it is the morning time down here, but you might be able to hear some banging in the background because I can see the Super League trophy through some uh, upstands because the players, coaches and captains are here today for the playoff launch. It's exciting. Yeah, no, it really is, Alex. And, uh, shaping up uh, to be a you know, absolute first-class playoff series. Uh, you know, what we have done, as fans will know, is taken the semi-final straight into grand final yep. format. I think, you know, we wanted to put one of those overused words, a bit of narrative into it. So yep. we've got a three-week playoff period. It'll build, it'll build, it'll build. And I think uh, lots to look forward to. So thank you to all five clubs who are represented today yep. for coach, captains and, 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 and star players. So it's going to be a great event here at Old Trafford today. Now to take us into the break, we're going to announce the winners of the Big Bachelors competition team treat and thank you coach. Right then, so two winners is the Saddleworth Rangers under 15s. We've got 20 standard tickets to eliminate the game two. The West Bank Bears open age, 20 tickets to semi-final two. Uh, and thank you coach, two winners, Stuart Collins, new Aswick All Blacks under 16s, six hospitality tickets to the eliminate the game one. And Graham Mattison from Wathbrow Hornets under eights six hospitalities thank you so much for all the great work you're doing in the community that it really is the grassroots 
is where the game is at its strongest, I believe. Absolutely. No, no, and, and I would endorse what you're saying there about thanking those people, yeah. those volunteers, those people who are getting behind junior and community clubs. Uh, you know, that is the future of the game, both in terms of, you know, young lads who might eventually make it out there, young yeah. girls who eventually might make it out there, and also fans, you know, filling our terraces, and, uh, and, and that's where it all starts. So, uh, big thank you, and all well-deserved, I'm sure. Right, stay tuned. Robert Elston back with us in part two. We're also meeting all the coaches and captains from all the playoff teams. See you after the break. Welcome back to part two here on Rugby on Free Sports. We're joined today by CEO of Super League, Robert Elston, who's giving us his insight and setting the scene for what's going to be a really exciting few weeks for the sport. I wanted to start this part because on Friday night with JJB's last game, what in your eyes has Jonesy brought to the game? On and off field? I think it's difficult to do it justice in words. It is so significant, it's so substantial. You know, I think, you know, me being back in the sport for 12 months, what I sense with all our players is a real commitment to the game, to do the right thing by the game, almost a sense of duty that you know, we have to all get behind the game and, 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 and grow it. And I think from Jamie's perspective then, you know, I see that in everything he does. I yeah. see a player who's investing in Super League on the pitch and he's yeah. done that, as you said, for 20 years. I think he invests you know, back into his community. You know, I know he invests into his family. I know he invests into what he does with you and everything about that is investing in Super League with the, you know with, with the name of making it as good as it possibly yeah. can be so it, you know you just sense a guy who you know 24 7 is bought into this sport who's passionate about it you also appreciate a guy who's a real student of the game and of life and a real thinker and it's really nice to come across people like that who give different perspectives who can look at things in different ways through different lenses you know, and that's all part of the richness of Super League and of life more generally. So, you know, uh, I just think he's great company in that yeah. respect because he does put a different perspective on things and, and, and that's terrific when you get that. Well, he said he couldn't do it justice. Well, we asked some players to give us one word about JJB. This is what they said. One word to describe Jamie John Drew Cannon. Winner. Legend. Tough. One word to de describe John Z. Champion. Be a competitor. I think everything he does, he competes. I think he's 60 years old and he's still lifting heavier in the gym, so he just loves competing, that bloke. Ruthless. Weird. <laughs> Probably a um, warrior. Um, the, guy, the guy deserves everything he gets. Um, he is the king of Leeds. He, he's the man, and it, it's, it's a sad day when he plays that last game. I think one word would do man any justice, um, but when I think of Jonesy, Without all those other words, which might get you emotional or whatnot, um, just Yorkshireman. It's a true Yorkshireman. He's a proud one, isn't it? I was going to say a legend, um, but I'm going to say champion, because I think on and off the field, he's been an absolute champion and he's one of the nicest fellows you could ever meet. And um, you know, I just want to wish him all the best. I'm sure he'll. He'll make a huge success of, of life after rugby. He's got a lovely family, and um, you know, to all of you, uh, enjoy a good holiday, but um, enjoy what's to come to. Obviously, Rob is held in such high esteem from people he's played with and against. But I just wanted to give a quick mention to some of the guys retiring. Danny Maguire, in particular, top try scorer mm -hmm. in Super League history. Also, Kyle Ablett, Jones's teammate, Benny Westwood, super Benny Westwood mm. for mm. Warrington, mm. Ben Kane, um, Mickey Hyam, mm. Lee Legend, 20 yeah, years again. No one sells the game better than yeah. the players. Yeah. And that's my experience with Rupert yeah, yeah, It's yeah. just the players bought into Rupert and it grew. Absolutely. But now is the tough time because you've got fans' questions. <laughs> and these, these have been vetted a little bit. There was hundreds, <laughs> hundreds. Right, okay. And these are the four we've gone with. So, Rich Johnson, Rich, thank you for getting involved. Uh, why do you still insist on Thursday night games? None of the fans want them, and I'm pretty sure none of the other clubs do either. Well, I would say that uh, fans who want to watch Super League uh, in their living rooms or down the pub yeah. do actually like Thursday, Thursday nights. nights. Yeah. So we should make that distinction. I know that's not what Richard was, not it? Richard yeah. was asking. Um, because ultimately, um, Thursday night works for Sky. Yeah. Sky deliver good ratings on Thursday nights. And I think as everybody knows, by a long way, Sky are our most important partner, yeah. our biggest partner 
and the partner we need to keep happy because whether we like it or not, our future is going to be very tightly linked to our relationship with Sky, that's for sure. Yeah, so absolutely. we have to uh, accept the fact that if they work for our primary partner, and then in all likelihood they're here to stay, and if they're here to stay, let's make the best of it rather than yeah. uh, constantly looking for, uh, uh, to, to criticise it, I guess. Now, you know, I, I don't dismiss the challenges of the M62. You know, driving out of Hull as I did last week to go all the way back to Manchester with three yeah. closures on the M62 <sighs> with an anticipated the arrival worst. home time at three o'clock in the morning the is not is not good. Ever. Is not good. But um, but they do work for Sky. Yeah. On to Gary Greenarch, who says, "How difficult is it to get 12 teams to agree anything for the betterment of the game when they all have their own selfish agenda?" <laughs> Gary, great question. Uh, Gary, great question. Um, is it challenging? Yeah, and I have to say, probably, uh, you know, 12, 15 months into the job, that's probably been the most challenging yeah. thing we have to deal with. Because, you know, Gary's absolutely right that when we have our Super League meetings, which happen, you know, on a monthly basis, we need clubs to turn up and take their club hats off and put their Super League hats on. Yeah. And that doesn't always happen. But if we are going to make some big and radical change yep. to the sport, which is what we need, then um, sometimes that can be a barrier and that's up to you know, good leadership from me, that's up yep. to me uh, driving uh, that majority and presenting information that's so strong, so compelling that clubs get behind it. Um, but governance of the game and how we make those decisions is, is a challenge, not unique to Rugby League, not unique to Super League. but. Um, uh, but it's something we have to work with and doesn't always uh, run smooth. Um, Lorraine Atkinson Clayton, would he ever consider changing the name from Super League back to Rugby League? As I feel less and less people know what Rugby League is, netball, hockey and table tennis, and I'm pretty sure there's others that have the title Super League. It's a, it's a very, no, listen, again, a very good question. And, um, and it's part of the branding process we're going through. Yep. And there is a feeling that we've lost Super League to the wider world. Yep. Um, you know, ultimately we play Rugby League, clearly. Yep. Our competition, and that's a distinction, the competition is Super League, yep. we play Rugby League. And maybe we just have to be tighter in how we, and when we use that. You know, we're talking about the game we play, when we yep. use that, we're talking about the competition, we use that. Um, I'm, I'm probably rambling a bit here, but it is very much on our agenda and it's something we're considering. Fantastic. Last one, Chris Heath. When will next year's Magic Weekend dates and venues be announced? People are already planning holidays for 2020 and if the event it will be losing fans that would otherwise be going. No, we're, and, and that's a very good, again, a good question and a very fair demand. Yeah. And what we've said is we'll make the announcement before the end of this month, so before the end of September. Yeah. But there's some real competition for, uh, for hosting the event. Oh, wow. Uh, from Newcastle and Liverpool, who are both really, really keen to get their hands on it. You know, yep. and I know you're a Spurs fan, Alex. We yep. did have a run at that amazing stadium oh, in Tottenham. It's the best. Uh, the, the price tag was slightly eye-watering. <laughs> so we are looking all the time. So, you know, yeah. fans should know that we are looking to go yeah. to London. We're looking at alternatives. Uh, but there is a commitment to announcing something uh, by the end of this month. Absolutely outstanding. It's time now for Bladen's Little League as Wagger goes over to Halton Farm with Hornets. Check this out. Wagger's Little League, sponsored by Bladen Electricals. I'm down at Halton Farm with Hornets. And me and this guy next to me, we've got a little bit of history. They've got obstacle courses they've got sevens right up until masters rugby league they've got girls rugby so all the teams are going to be playing fixtures today there's a licensed bar where i'm going to have a pint challenge there's plenty of entertainment we're going to have a great day in the background as well you can see the witness first team are also doing their team run it's going to be an absolutely fantastic day can we me and you met friends though come in yeah we're back we're back we're bezies Right, the chairman of this great club. How proud are you? Mate, it's unbelievable. The, the work that the members have put in to stage this started last November. Yeah. It's eight, nine months between making this, but look at it now, it's great. Bren, 
Summer Festival. Talk to us about it because it's outstanding. You've got the witness first team on the field doing the team run. Cheers, Wayne. Thanks very much for coming down as well, guys. Pleasure. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is the fifth year of doing this now, and it just gets bigger and bigger every single year. Uh, what's really good for us is there's 30 teams playing here today. We've got 30? 30. 30 teams, yeah. So the Cubs are going to be playing, so from yep. age four, and then we're going up right up to Masters. Uh, so 65 year old fellas will be running I should have brought my boots. Someone did tweet me and say, bring your boots, Wagga, I might get a game today. Yes, the boys are bubbling to girls, all the Vikings. Come on, girls, <laughs> give me a Vikings. All the Vikings. <laughs> this guy, absolutely love him, respect him. What you do for the media and rugby league, you must love it. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. No, just little ideas, try to bring them to life, get something going. And um, it's great when people get on the back of it, you know. Bradford last week having some shots yeah. at me, but boy, 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 hey, boy. I love it, man. I love it. You know, boy, I hope more clubs get involved. Well, that's what I love about it because you're promoting winners, not just winners, but rugby league girls. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. How good is this? Fans, with brilliant club. They've got from sevens right up until masters. They've got DJs. They've got inflatables. <laughs> it's good for the community club. Oh yeah, for sure. This is one of the uh, the great breeding grounds of the Northwest. You know, yeah. if you go inside, there's a big list of players that have played here. Photos up on the wall, trophies throughout the years, you know. Half of the Super Leagues come through this place, well, if you Richie ask them. Mile at Percival. Yeah, there's loads of them, man. And uh, you can see the turnout today. They reckon about three, 000, 4, 000 three, four thousand down here today. Four thousand. Are you staying for the DJ? DJ oh, Lee sure. Butler I'm, on. I'm here till three in the morning. Three in the morning. Kim, I'm not coming home. The kids will have to look after themselves. I'm off partying with girls. Cheers, mate. Let's have a good day. Cheers, mate. Fight challenge. Fight challenge. Fight challenge with the chairman. Germans fight challenge. <laughs> The entertainment is first class. Look at this. What more do you want than frozen? Right, we've got all sorts happening. Inflatables, I'm gonna try it all. Woo! Woo! Yeah, boys! I can't get out. Problem is, though, no. soaked again. Why do these summer festivals just get wet? Went to Blackbrook, didn't we? Not what I'm saying, what is it? We're just in the kitchen, right, where it's all happening. We're going to feed up the team. So me and Gels are making the burgers. Well, not making them, we're helping prep them. Well, Gels is, I'm not doing all yet. I'm lost in kitchen, mate. You can tell I don't cook much at home, Gels. You know? <laughs> mate, you're, you're a machine. It's funny when they say balm over here, it's a bread cake in uh, Yorkshire. Say, oh, girls are bad. Burgers, boys! Awesome cheese there. Yeah, cheese slices there, boys. Ripping, no worries, boys. Hey, old mate! How are you doing? Are you alright, mate? Look at this guy! You good? Dangerous out there in them, surely. Slippy, ain't it? Very slippy, very slippy. But it's all good. The atmosphere is building well. It's about to kickstart the summer festival. The players are coming out soon. Ladies and gentlemen, can you welcome to the field your team? What an introduction. I got revved up like I was playing a big game. I, didn't, I haven't had that buzz since I finished playing rugby league. It was better than Magic Weekend. The atmosphere is absolutely electric. We're gonna go, go watch some games now. I don't know who to watch first, but I'll watch the 11, sevens, girls. I don't know who to watch. I might just go have a pint.
what brings you to the rugby festival? Oh, obviously we're here um, uh, promoting the police, uh, looking at safety vehicles, safety, home security and everything, um, and obviously enjoying the rugby. Problem with me, right? I'm from Cas Vegas, right? Look at the weather. It's meant to be a summer festival. It's a great event, but it's no Yorkshire, this place. It's nothing like Yorkshire. I'm not having that, mate. Come on, get yourself in there. Come on. Back to Cas. In there. <laughs> Sorry, let me out. Ring me mum. Ring me mum. Dad Godwin, Johnny Godwin. I've got two boys, I've got a wife. Come on, let me out. Another outstanding summer festival. Well done to Holton fans. I'm joined by the under 11s Reds. Uh, outstanding. There's plenty more games to be played, but there is only one winner. And what is that, guys? Rugby League! Yeah, the boys! Work it out! Work it out! Rob Wagger is just, he's just, he's a man of the people. Mm. Andy Gellin, Wayne Godwin, man of the people. Infectious energy, enthusiasm, passion, you know, it's just great to be around people like that, so I love it. And, uh, and Wagger's uh, infectiousness is, yeah. uh, is, is terrific. It's time now for you to get your day job on because everyone's been building in the background. Thanks for coming down and filming. Pleasure. No, with always, us. Alex, a pleasure. To finish the show, we're going to talk to the captains, we're going to talk to the coaches, and we're going to get their view on the, the playoffs that start this week. Mm -hmm. Big game for you, Thursday. <laughs> Two big games. Warrington and, uh, Cass. Yeah, no, Warrington Cass will be uh, a, a great game. And, you know, Warrington on their day can beat anybody. Uh, Cass perhaps less frequently, yeah. frequently, and what I've said is, you know, about their consistency, they need to find some of that and they need to find it quickly, but that'll be a great game. And then Friday night, you know, Wigan-Salford, um, a, a very, I think, unpredictable game. We yeah. talked about the sort of mercurial Jackson Hastings and, and the impact, and, and and, yeah. and, but the impact he can have on a game. So two uh, fantastic games to look forward to, and you know, more than anything, I hope the fans get there in, in big numbers and give the playoffs, you know, the kickstart and, uh, yep. and the start they deserve on the route to uh, gracing this field behind us in a few weeks' time. Whatever happens, you need to get yourself down to the grand final. It's going to be a great night. We're, we've got a rugby M trip coming. Get yourself along with your family. See on the website rugby.co.uk, also superleague.co.uk yep. for tickets. Get involved, come down, give it a try. If you've never been to a rugby league game before, come and give it a try. Uh, right, it's time to finish the show by going to meet the captains and coaches of this week's playoff teams. Uh, I think we've been uh, consistent, mate. I feel like we've, um, we've shown that each week that we're working hard for each other and Obviously in the Challenge Cup final we got that wrong and um, we're just looking to, to keep improving as a team and, and just try and look forward to the playoffs now. I think the experience from last year and um, we had a great great run in the, in the playoffs last year and that, that helped us to get into the grand final. I think that definite form at the right time definite, definitely helps. But yeah, the, the season for us, we had a, we had a pretty st stinker of a start to it. but. There wasn't too much doubt in the lads' mind that when we did find a bit of form that we'd come good. Um, it was just kind of shaking the shaking the losses off our back and, and getting some confidence. And when we did that, we, we didn't really look back. No doubt it'll be a, a solid game. Uh, we're going to use to these games. They've been in for the last eight years. They know how things work. Um, 
but we got, we're going in there confident. Don't get me wrong, there's still improvements in us, we feel, but I think the, the way we've been defending is, is what's been getting us the wins recently. So if we can keep defending like that and uh, just sort of getting that arm wrestle, we can stick with them because there be no doubts to the players they've got. They've got class players who can turn a game on his head. Uh, but yeah, we just need to stay with them and hopefully we can come out on top. Yeah, I thought they were awesome in the Challenge Cup final. Outside of that, you're right, the form's been a little bit up and down, um, but they've got good players and, you know, they'll be looking to, to get back to their, their standard. You know, we know plenty about them. You know the threats, you know the strengths, you know the weaknesses as well. So it's a matter of being good enough to, uh, to handle the, what they're going to throw at you. They've got some, some players with real impact in the team. Oh, massive challenge, I thought. I thought they were really good for us against, against Wigan and obviously they put up a great performance against Hull the week before to get the results, so nah, they, they're up and down like us with the form, but if they hit form, they're a dangerous side and we know that, but we're just concentrating on ourselves and each individual performance and if we do that, we'll be all right. Oh, they've been both brilliant as well, obviously, from Wigan to come from where they was, obviously they had quite a struggle start and then, obviously, everyone knows Wigan are going to be up there challenging for the grand final and and Salford, they've been brilliant, obviously, and Watson's done a great job with them. And it should be, whoever you're going to play in the semi final it's going to be a tough game, so really looking forward to it. Yeah, it does it as a game, it does. Um, we, we know we've got it within us, we knew that previous anyway. Um, yeah, we displayed it against St. Helens with a great performance, but I don't want to think about the Challenge Cup too much, that's gone. Um, it's, a new, it's a new format, um, top five, and we finished fourth, and we didn't want to finish fourth. It's, it's, um, I know we're at home, but we, we, we want to finish as high as we could. We didn't, we didn't do that due to our own form, but um, now we'll, we'll play the, play the cards we dealt. Yeah, we, we, we've done well to, to get in there. Um, I mean, at no point this year have we been able to play our, our best team, um, which, is, which has been difficult. Um, but yeah, I, our boys have worked really hard to, to get us where, where we are. There's, there's been quite a few players who've made the debuts, and um, and that's been that's been massive for them, and will be great for us in, in the future. And and then um, yeah, some of our, our our fringe players, you know, have played a lot more games than they would normally have done. Have uh, have done done well. I mean, people like Jake Truman is a young kid who's who's playing every game bar, bar one. Um, you know, Corey Aston's played in there at half and and done some good things for us. Um, so it's been tough, it's been tough in, in all sorts of ways. The injuries have, have never really gone away, but uh, we, we've maintained a, a, a tough mentality for a large part of the season and we've given ourselves a chance. Yeah, I think when, whenever you, you've got lads, especially lads like George, who's, who's, who's from the town, he's, he's brought a massive amount to the side, he's, he's given us so much, he's been involved in so many finals for us now. Um, to be losing, a lad like that, and, and some other boys who are leaving, like Serge, who've been around for a long time as well. Whenever, whenever you've got players of that, that calibre and that stature in a, a team leaving, yeah, you do want to. It does make it a little bit more, more special to kind of get there and, and do it, do it for them to send them off on a high as well. Justin, uh, he's a great bloke, and obviously last year we come up short and in both semis, and we want to send him off with what he deserves and what he's done for us, and we're really going to miss him. But he's a, he's a really good bloke, so hopefully we can. If we can get that win for him, it'll be it'll be really good. But we're just obviously co concentrating on the semi now. Oh, massive! Um, ben is a stalwart. If you ask Benny, he's probably saved the club twice. Uh, so, nah, he's, he's he, everyone knows Benny. Everyone, I think if he was at Leeds Friday and they gave him a round of applause coming onto the field, I said to Benny, I said there's not many people who get a round of applause going to away fans, and that's how much he's done for the game. Not just Warrington, but he's a, he's a top bloke, Benny, and he knows the times right. Um, his body's telling him it's right, but we hope we can send him out on a massive high. You play, you start at February time all the way to October, and it's all, it's all about this game, really. It's all about trying to get to the grand final, trying to get through the playoffs, trying to play well, and then get an opportunity to come here. Um, and that's, that, that's pretty much, that's your goal at the, end, at the start of the season, and it seems a long, long time ago now, but. It's, um, it's definitely exciting when you get back here. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Uh, something a little sun kick saying, can I walk you out? Well, I let Price's daughter walk us out this time uh, at Challenge Cup because we lost last time my son walked us out, so he's not doing it again.